So I know we've all seen and read the posts, the comments, the questions on the forums on the internet saying, hey, my CTSV has lowered high idle oil pressure or, you know, it's at such and such amount. Is this good or what have I hurt? So in my CTSV, I had an issue where I lost some hot idle oil pressure and also just oil pressure across the board. So I figured that I would share my story and what happened to my car. And also we'll go over the short block and take a look at some engine damage. So real quickly, on uh, this car, it's a 2010 CTSV. Is cam, heads, porta blower, Nick Williams, auxiliary fuel pump. It had pretty much everything except for a built bottom end. It was still a stock bottom end LSA. It made as much as 843 rear wheel horsepower on the dyno. And I consistently saw 32 to 34 hot idle oil pressure. Just normal driving, summertime, wintertime, it didn't really matter. So 32 to 34. I went down to Cleason Cars. You can see the video of the run here on the channel. And I went down, I made a pass. And right after the first pass, I noticed I was scanning the car with HP tuners and noticed that I lost about 10 pounds of hot idle oil pressure. It was down to around 22 to 24. So I was a little bit concerned at that point. I trailered the car down about four hours down to Houston, Raceway Park, so I decided, well, I'll go ahead and I'll make another pass. If it's headed that direction where it's going to need to rebuild, then, then that's the way it's going. So I made another pass, ran the 10.3 at 135.6 mile per hour, which was my personal best. I only got two passes while I was down there, and this is why. So on that second pass, I lost another 10 pounds of hot idle oil pressure and was down to the 12 to 14 hot idle oil pressure range. After I brought the car back and backed off the trailer and everything, when I first fired it up when it was cold, it still would have over 40 pounds. But as it heated up, it would get down to the low teens. So we'll get right into the failure in the engine. So some of you probably know what you're looking at. Some might not. So I'll just go over quickly. You've got main bearings inside each of these main bearing caps. You've got half housed in the cap, just like this. And then the other half is housed down in the block. And that's what your crank is setting down inside of. So you've got five of them. They are numbered. Also, if you ever mess with them, there's an arrow pointing to the front of the engine on each one. So this is number one. As you can see, the crank has a little bit of scoring on it. Number one, and I did not get out number five because the back plate is in the way over here on this side to get it out. So number one, you can see some of the brass color in it. And so that bearing sets right inside of the main cap. It just snaps right in. So that one did not appear to spin inside. Sometimes you can have it to where the bearing will spin with the crankshaft inside the main cap. So next is number two. I took a video as I took these others apart and here's a video of number two.
So as you can see in that video, the number two main cap, the bearing actually spun and you can see the heat from it. You can see how the bearing down in the block has shifted and one edge of it was sticking up a little bit next to the crank up and out of the block. So that one had pretty significant damage. Some pieces kind of came off of it as well. And while I'm thinking of it, I'll also mention part of how I knew at the very beginning that I did not have a oil pressure sending unit or something else wrong giving me a bad reading i drained about a quart out of the bottom of the pan and it looked like it had glitter in it like a metallic paint job so you could see the bearing material in the oil so i knew that it was definitely something wrong with the bearings so here's a video of Main cap number three. As you can see, main bearing number three also had significant damage. So as you can imagine, the center of the crank is probably going to have the most uh, movement in it. So I was figuring that most of the problems and issues or the worst bearings would be the middle ones. And as you can see, number two and number three were very bad. Number one was the lightest of the wear and here is a video of number four So number four was just a little bit worse than number one. So it had scoring in it, a little bit of little bit of scratches on the crank, which would polish out. And obviously the bearing, you can see some brass material and everything down in it, in the metal. So that is pretty much the extent of the damage on here. The uh, rod bearings, the rods, rod bearings all seem like they're tight. I haven't taken them apart, but usually where these fail is in the main bearings. Some may ask, well, why the LSA? Why would this car at 81,000 miles uh, tear up the main bearings? Well, there's several different reasons. Of course, you've got a lot of horsepower trying to be held by a stop bottom end. The stop bearing clearances are on the very tight side. Also, you've got things like the uh, oil piston squirters. Let's see if I can show it to you. There you can see an oil piston squirter right down there. And that squirts oil on the bottom of the piston. So the oil piston squirters they are going to cool the piston, but that's also going to also heat up your oil. So that's kind of a drawback of those in that regard. So you got warmer oil, you got boost, you've got a blower that's being turned, lots of horsepower, tight bearing clearances. Also another thing on the LSA oil pan, it just has this baffle, just a normal stock one. And if you research it, you'll see that the LSAs have an oil starve, starvation problem. So they'll starve some of oil on hard launches when you're 60 footing at the racetrack. 
So a fix for that is a improved racing baffle. Just, just how it sounds, that's the name of it, improved racing baffle. And so I'll do a video on that at another time. I'll upgrade that baffle. You literally unbolt it, pull the old baffle out. I'll clean up the old pan and install it and show that to y'all. But at least this will give you a little bit of an idea of what it looks like, what could be going wrong when your oil pressure is going low. So yeah, I hope that answers some of y'all's questions and hopefully was informational. Uh, if it was helpful, if you found it any bit useful, this video, please give it a like and also subscribe to the channel. And I will do some more videos as I'm working on this build.